I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews with Christoph Mussenbrock, the founder and architect of Ether Risk. Christoph, welcome yes. to this show. And it's a pleasure to have you on today. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I'm excited to dive into Ether Risk in the world of decentralized insurance, insurance protocols and smart contracts. There's a lot to unravel in this industry. Absolutely. I would love for you to kick it off for us by just giving an overview and some of the solutions that Etherisk is bringing to the insurance <laughs> industry through cryptocurrencies and blockchain. Exactly. Yeah. The main, the main idea is that uh, we want to build an open platform where people uh, and teams all over the world can build their own insurance products. And we provide the essential building blocks for this. We provide uh, something like an operating system, which consists on off-chain and on-chain components. So we have a complete uh, on-chain uh, smart contract uh, suit where people can use. Uh, and so it makes the creation of new insurance products on-chain very easy because uh, yeah, the operating system provides all what you need already. And you only need to configure your product uh, and the statistical model and some things like this. Mm -hmm. And the off-chain components also enable you to, to bring your product to the customer via uh, uh, something like a toolbox for front-end building and uh, stuff like this. And also we can help you and your team uh, with the legal stuff because we gathered some experience in the last years. So people who are struggling with insurance regulations then they can uh, find uh, also support with our solution. And uh, we don't have a solution for everything, but mm -hmm. we have pretty much experience. And so it will help uh, teams to build their own products in much shorter time. Definitely, that's great. And with the insurance industry, you know, I haven't seen it fully encapsulated inside of cryptocurrencies and smart contracts. Obviously it's a little different than the traditional insurance industry. I'm curious yeah. when, uh, you're found when, when you were founding the company and looking at the vision of how are we going to deliver these solutions in a better way using this technology mm -hmm. what were the main things that you saw that really needed to be fixed in insurance and make sure you get right with ether risk yeah uh, when we started we had the vision that we create a system which would work completely on chain mm -hmm. and which would be composable with other financial products in a, in a way which we cannot have in the traditional insurance in a traditional insurance, you can have software systems, but uh, for each partner, you need a different interface and you need to build everything uh, from scratch. On blockchain, you have this standard. Yeah? You have these standardized tokens, you have standardized DeFi protocols, and you have uh, standardized um, uh, smart contracts, uh, which help you to uh, interact with every other smart contract in a, in a standardized way. Mm -hmm. And that's not possible in the traditional insurance. So we think that this alone brings uh, so much benefit that you can compose different uh, solutions and uh, one, one building block is insurance, one building block is supply chain, one building block are oracles and everything fits together automatically. And uh, this is a huge advantage of a blockchain against traditional uh, insurance and traditional finance. I think that is uh, the main reason, but of course there are also some other reasons for example, transparency, uh, blockchain-based insurance is transparent for both the customer and also the insurance company and also the investors who uh, provides the capital, the risk capital behind it. So uh, it removes these uh, black boxes from the system where people mm -hmm. uh, do not know how their products are calculated. They do not know uh, if they get a payout or not and so on. So transparency and by transparency, we have more fairness and of course, then uh, the, this additional benefit of being able to compose products out of it together with other DeFi components. Mm -hmm. Definitely, the transparency I think is key, and there's all, a lot of benefits. Uh, but it seems, you know, with all of these obvious benefits over the traditional industry, it seems that decentralized insurance and insurance on the blockchain is still fairly early on, from what I understand. Can yeah. can you give your expertise? Uh, into how far along is decentralized insurance from actually being adopted, you know, uh, globally or into the mainstream? And, and why are we at that point right now? Yeah, 
Of course, the, the main issue is uh, adoption of cryptocurrencies in the general public. So uh, you know that uh, many company, uh, countries are still struggling with this and uh, they, they do not know how to, how to handle this. Uh, many central banks are experimenting with uh, central bank digital currencies, but it's all early stage. And uh, so in the, uh, interestingly enough, in the developed countries, so the G8 uh, countries, for example, their crypto adoption is still at a low level. Uh, but, you, you know, for example, El Salvador, they uh, made the step and uh, introduced uh, Bitcoin as uh, the legal tender. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's also an experience what we make that uh, the de developing countries, so in our examples, for example, Kenya, they are making much larger steps toward adoption of blockchain, cryptocurrencies and the like. Uh, in comparison to the developed countries. So mm -hmm. uh, we think, and that's why we are working in Kenya, uh, where we have uh, some 17,000 farmers on our system. Wow. Of course, they don't use cryptocurrency because they are, and they are also do not know uh, that they're using blockchain. They just have these uh, tools which enable them to get transparency on their own product and to see what's happening. And that's the difference to the way it used to be before. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think um, adoption is the main uh, showstopper uh, currently for uh, decentralized insurance. And uh, so we start in the developing countries and we hope that we then uh, show that it's working. And then also uh, we know that all these insurance companies worldwide are very interested in blockchain and uh, they, are, they would like to put their toe into it, but uh, they're still uh, reluctant yeah, because of regulatory, uh, regulatory reasons mm -hmm. and so on. So uh, I think it will take maybe two or three years until the mainstream in the industry will also dive into decentralized finance and also in decentralized insurance. And uh, that's the time what we need to use uh, to build up our position and uh, to, first of all, in developing countries. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, great point there about Africa as well and leapfrogging with the infrastructure and being able to onboard yeah. uh, into Absolutely. decentralized insurance because they just don't have those other barriers to entry of the traditional infrastructure, you know, blocking innovation. Um, so it's exciting to hear. I was reading into the partnership that you have in Africa and with the oh. crop farmers and 17,000. That's amazing. I would love if you could elaborate a little bit more on how exactly does this crop insurance work through EtherRisk? Mm -hmm. What's the benefit to the farmers and, and how does that work with smart contracts? Yeah, first of all, uh, it's a fully automated product. So there is no human interaction with the processing of the policies because uh, both the onboarding of farmers as well as the uh, claims process, underwriting process, that is all done automatically. The farmer will onboard by using a simple feature form uh, where he can uh, type in a specific code and uh, the code is distributed with seed bags yeah for example maize or uh, soya beans and so he gets a little card with a code he can type in the code pay the premium also with his phone with uh, an electronic payment system and then he will uh, receive a policy and he is insured for the specific crop and uh, from this uh, activation of this code, we also know where the farmer lives. And so we can mm. uh, see uh, what type of risk there is. And uh, so risk, what we ensure is the risk of excess or, um, uh, or too little rainfall. So if you know the position of the farmer, then we can uh, use satellite data to determine if at the location of the farmer there is uh, sufficient uh, precipitation and rain and if there is not enough or too, too much then we can directly trigger a payout mm -hmm. and that is all controlled by a blockchain and the farmer can buy a business feature phone he can also access his data on chain and see what's happening and that's the tr this is transparency what also helps to build up trust between the farmer and the company very cool i love that automation it's going to make it so much easier uh, when, when, you know, when the first world countries are able to just automate everything. Uh, I, I know that uh, your team is working on, you know, insurance for many other use cases besides farming as well. Maybe you can touch on what are the early use cases for EtherRisk? Yeah. 
So the, the main uh, use case is the so-called parametric insurance. Parametric means that uh, the claims management, so if there is a loss or not, that can be determined by databases, yeah? not by humans, but by just looking in a database, be it a weather database or wind database or solar energy database or whatever data you have. And, you know, in these times with IoT, you have plenty of data. And so it's very, uh, there are many new use cases for insurance because you have data. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one, uh, one example, what we have is a flight delay. This is a, uh, also an insur parametric insurance, which in, where you can protect yourself from the risk of a flight being delayed. Mm -hmm. uh, we use flight databases and uh, also uh, we have wind database for hurricane insurance, for example, in Puerto Rico. And uh, these products are being developed now. And uh, all of these are parametric insurance, so we have full automation. Of course, you could, in principle, also use human agents. Uh, then you would still have transparency and composability from the blockchain, but you would, of course, have a more uh, inefficient process in the claim handling. Mm -hmm. So we postpone that a bit, uh, but uh, in principle, we can do any type of insurance. Very cool. <clears throat> and speaking of the automation, I was looking into you know, the cryptocurrency factors in it, and you were mentioning that Maybe the farmers don't have to use cryptocurrency, but I did see that there is a network token for EtherRisk, the, the DIP. Yeah. Uh, can mm -hmm. you talk about how that incorporates into the protocol and, and how does it benefit everybody in the ecosystem? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So the, the basic idea is that every insurance needs a capital pool, a so-called risk pool to cover excessive mm -hmm. losses. Now from, from premiums alone, you would not be able to pay uh, a lot of... Uh, losses so you need a capital pool and uh, people who uh, put money in the capital pool will uh, need to stake uh, dip tokens yeah so staking is the main mechanism and people who stake their dip tokens they will also earn profits or earn returns from the uh, premiums which are not used to pay out uh, losses and uh, so that's very uh, similar to the traditional insurance yeah when you all have also these risk pools but they are, of course, not on-chain, but uh, in, in a traditional bank account. But we put that, that whole thing on-chain, and uh, therefore it can be uh, done with much less friction, and uh, people can enter the pool or leave the pool uh, in, in a much easier way than in traditional finance, where you need to invest mm -hmm. for a long time and uh, lock your capital. And uh, so uh, decentralized insurance makes it also possible to use the capital much more efficiently than traditional insurance, uh, yeah. at least in the long term. So we are currently working on these uh, staking models and the DIP token is essentially the, the token which drives this whole staking process. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thanks for that, Christoph. And yeah, you mentioned you're working on that right now. I know you're already working with all these farmers. I would love to get uh, a glimpse into you know the next six months for EtherRisk and mm -hmm. what are the major tasks that your team's looking at handling yeah. and releases into the market? Yeah, so we started in Kenya with our first uh, crop insurance product. And the idea is now that we uh, develop this product in a way that it can be used as a blueprint for virtually any country which has crop insurance. Now the system is always the same. You have satellite data, you have uh, policies, you have farmers which use electronic devices to onboard or to make payments. And this can be uh, modified very easily for and, and used in, in many different countries. And so we will, uh, at the next, uh, in the next six months, we will, uh, for example, move to other African countries mm -hmm. and uh, deploy the product there uh, in sometimes a bit different uh, context with different payment systems and also, of course, different uh, type of risks. But the principle is always the same. And so we want to build this universal platform where we have the reusable components which can be used in basically any context. And the same, of course, for other types of insurance, the, the wind insurance, hurricane insurance, that are all things what can be used in other countries as well. And so the next six months will be uh, this uh, scaling of these uh, basic insurance products and, of course, introduction of staking and uh, by this uh, also entering in, in the whole value chain of uh, risk transfer on chain. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. And if the viewers are looking to learn more about these insurance products, 
and when the staking comes out and, and all the other updates for Etherisk as well, what's the best way for them to get involved in the community and to try out the platform? Sorry, the last was difficult and, to understand. Uh, to get involved in the community and to try out the platform and the protocol. Yeah, yeah we are currently uh, publishing a series of tutorials. So interested teams can just uh, work along the tutorials. And we will also provide, uh, in, in the near future, we will provide a complete software development kit where you can just uh, start your own product uh, in a local uh, testing environment uh, with some sample products. So you can actually, in, in a matter of a few hours, you can start your own insurance product and work on and try, try it out. And so this is uh, to engage the developer community. And for the developer community, we have also started a rapid development environment, which we have acquired uh, in the last uh, six months. So that allows you to build uh, also front end for insurance applications in really no time. And that's one big advantage uh, that we do not have, uh, not only have the back, the, the on-chain components, but we also have a complete environment for building off-chain off -chain components. And uh, so that is something what we hope that many developers will jump on this and uh, try their own. Uh, for the rest of the community, of course, we will build uh, first uh, products uh, where they, which they can use. For example, flight delay is uh, short for launch and uh, also, of course, the different staking solutions. And everybody who wants to enter is invited to our Telegram channels and other uh, outlets. We have blogs, we have uh, also a forum. So uh, if you want to learn about Isaris, then simply uh, jump on our homepage, isaris.com. Then you have all these social icons uh, at the top, and then you can uh, jump on our Telegram channel, forum, blog, and so on. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Christoph. I will leave those links as well in the description box below. All the best mm -hmm. on all of these decentralized insurance products okay, moving forward. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Ashley.